I'm Matt Lang, and these are my top 10 mix tips. Number one, arrangement. Arrangement is arguably more important than any singular mix technique. Arrange your elements wisely. It's much easier to get them to all work together when there's less of them happening at the same time. Number two, this is more of a recording trick than a mix technique, but I kind of do all at the same time, so consequently, it works for me. Double tracking. Don't use a doubling plugin. That's cheating, and it never sounds good. You always have weird phase issues. Instead, multi-track your instruments. Whenever I do, say, a guitar part, if it's gonna be dense, there might be four different guitars, two, uh, four different recordings, two panned hard left, two panned hard right. If I'm doing vocals, you're damn right, those are gonna be multi-stacked too, where if I might have a lead might be three vocals alone where I have one dead center, one hard left, one hard right. I might have harmonies on top of that that are also stacked. When you stack things, it sounds more organic, it sounds huge, and it doesn't sound fake. It just sounds bigger. And that is such an important trick to me. Number three, multiband side chaining. This is one of my favorite mix techniques, especially to clear up a really dense mix. And the trick is, as opposed to traditional sidechain compression, especially in, say, the electronic music world, where you have, say, a bass line or anything else getting triggered by a kick drum, this, we're going to use a multiband compressor, and we're just going to trigger a specific frequency. So, let's say I have a string section and I have a vocal, but the string is actually in the way of the vocal, so what I'll do, I'll send a sidechain out of the vocal to the string, and then I'm going to just side, or I'm just going to sidechain the frequency that, let's say it's around 1.5k, 1500 hertz, something like that, that's fighting with the string and that's what the vocal is fighting for. So every time the vocal hits, it's just going to duck out a little bit of that 1.5k and everything's going to sound really smooth together. Number four, audio fades. This is a trick I learned from the drum and bass guys, uh, in particular Calix and TB, who are absolutely just geniuses at mixing. Like if you ever want to hear a mix that is immaculately perfect for that style of music, listen to them. I mean, it's mind-blowing how tight it is. But what T taught me once, was as opposed to using a sidechain compressor, what he was doing at the time, he was actually just straighten the audio. Anytime a kick hit or a snare hit, he would use an audio fade that would just duck out everything underneath it. So every time a kick hit, there would be a fade straight in the audio that took all the bass out. Every time a snare hit, same thing. And that way you could have a really, really high level, like a very high RMS on top of that, but nothing is clipping. And it's a very different sound than sidechaining too, where, um, it almost kind of hugs the transient itself. And the trick I find is, especially with a kick or a snare, the kind of curve, basically the curve of my fade in is essentially gonna be the inverse of the decay of the kick. So as the kick kind of fades out like this, the fade in underneath, it's gonna kind of be like that. So the two things are basically hugging each other. It's a really hip technique. Number five, this is almost more of an endorsement than anything else, but check out Newfangled Audio's Elevate. That thing, when you put it on a kick or a snare, if you ever need to fatten something up, that will do it. Between basically the transient design it has, the saturation, the amount of multiband limiting, you can really take a pretty wimpy kick or any wimpy piece of percussion, I even use it on hi-hat sometimes, and just turn it into this fire-breathing behemoth of a kick or a snare or anything. It's just, it's an amazing plugin and I highly recommend you check it out. Number six, EQ your sends. And by that, I mean your reverb and delay sends. Yes, because for whatever reason, a lot of people just forget to do it. And if you're sending all these things out to say, let's say you send a bunch of vocals out to a delay, there's gonna be frequency buildup when you do that anyway. On top of that, the delay might color it. If you have a reverb, that reverb might have its own coloration. So stick an EQ on after. It's just gonna clean it all up and it's gonna sound better. It's gonna sound cleaner and you can always just process your actual send even further. Don't be lazy, take it further and your mix will be wider, it'll be nicer, it'll be prettier. Number seven, go outboard and it doesn't have to be expensive. You can do it purely with guitar pedals if you really want. Distortion plugins are fun, don't get me wrong, Isotope Trash is my favorite distortion plugin, it's incredible. But if I ever want to do something that was like a little bit, has a little bit more character, I'm gonna reach for one of these and this is a fuzz pedal by Dwarfcraft. This is called the Eau Claire Thunder. It's basically a gigantic Big Muff style fuzz, which um, ever think of like Smashing Pumpkin Siamese Dream? This will kind of get you in that world. It's sonic obliteration. And I have found so many times when I really just want to crush a signal and I want to do it in a way that's a lot more interesting than using a plugin. 
I'll, I'll send the signal out into a fuzz pedal or distortion pedal, and often I'll use something like the Eau Claire Thunder, or um, there's another one uh, Dwarf Grass makes called the Reese Lightning, which is really effective on Reese's. Go figure. But on top of it, it's tactile. You get to turn knobs and you feel the immediate response of the signal hitting the distortion. It's, it's really, it's engaging and it's fun and it always sounds better to me than any plugin ever. Number eight, unsync your delay times. I know it sounds like blasphemy, especially for me, because I'm really particular about timing being really tight. I mean, I time correct pretty much everything. However, there's a certain musicality you have when your delays are just slightly out. And it's very easy. You can do it in your DAW. You could just, you know, take basically your quantization, whether you have it set to, you know, an eighth note, dotted eighth quarter, whatever, and set it to milliseconds. And then you'll see the actual millisecond readout in most delays. And you could just say offset it by five, 10 milliseconds. That's one way to do it. Something I prefer to do, again, I'm gonna to go to guitar pedals. So I'll take something like this Eventide Rose. And this is one of my favorite delay pedals ever because it is technically a digital delay, but um, it also has a lot of analog warmth and it's something very different than um, your typical digital delay, but it's not a fully analog delay either. It kind of mixes the two worlds. But now it has a USB editor that you can actually sync it to your DAW and that's a really hip function. But sometimes it's fun just to actually turn the delay time knob yourself and just do it by ear and it's never gonna be perfect, but it just has more vibe that way. And there was a track I put out recently last year, it was called Drift and the entire guitar line that is entirely run through this rose. And it's, it's mostly, it's close to a dotted eighth note, but it's not perfect by any means, but it just makes the whole thing sound so much more alive and musical. So unsync your delays. You actually might have some happy accidents or not even happy accidents. Just unsync your delays. It might sound better. Number nine, sidechain your delay send. This is one that's really important to me because I tend to use a lot of delay on vocals and I love the sound of a lot of feedback as well. So the issue with that is sometimes the delays can actually be, you know, the feedback is fighting with the lead line and it gets mushy, it gets muddy. So a really easy way to do that is stick a sidechain compressor on top of your actual delay scent. So any, and then you just key it off the vocal. So anytime your vocal comes in, it's going to push the delay back down. And I use a kind of long release, maybe say around, you know, 300, 500 milliseconds. I'm going to do whatever sounds good to me. But Every time then as the vocal lets go, it just allows the delay to kind of come back up again and it's smooth and it's musical and you still have that really nice long feedback trail, that really nice long delay tail, but it's not fighting with your lead. So that is such an important trick. And you can also do that also, like I was talking about earlier with a multiband compressor, say you don't want to, you know, take it out all the way, but you want to take out the low mids because for whatever reason, there's something around 400 Hertz that's fighting with your vocal. I know for me, just the resonance of my voice, I have a lot of issues around 300. So I'll often do that as well, where I'll be, you know, side chaining around 300 Hertz just to kind of scoop out that room. Lastly, number 10 on a vocal, my favorite EQ is actually a multiband compressor. The main reason being vocals are pretty much the most dynamic instrument we have. There goes a cat and they're very dynamic as well. And EQs, they can often sound a little bit too static. Um, I don't really like how if you do a little too harshly, you can make a vocal sound pretty anemic, but that's where a multiband compressor becomes really handy because it's going to actually react to the program material, which is a vocal, which is dynamic by nature. So I essentially, I'll set up, I use usually the FabFilter Pro MB, which is an incredible multiband compressor. And if you don't have it, you should really, I really do implore you to check it out because it's a, it's very easy to use. It sounds great and it's really powerful. So I might set it up so I'm dipping out a little bit around my low mids. I might be dipping out a little bit of my mid mids and my high mids that everything that's anytime a little, something gets a little too pokey, it's just gonna dip it down a lot. And I'm not doing heavy lifting with it. I'm, I mean, the low mids, because for my voice, I get pretty low mid heavy. So I might, you know, be dipping out, you know, maybe four or five dB, maybe six even. But once you get to like the mids and the higher mids, uh, usually not more than three dB. I don't want to be too heavy handed with it. And then I'll still do some corrective EQ work, but then I'll also use the multiband compressor actually as a DSer, where I'll take the very high band and say, you know, just put a low shelf that anything above 8K or something like that, whenever it passes above that threshold, just get pushed down a little. And then I might put a different DSer after it, but I might put a different DSer after, but it's nice to have a little, uh, 
it's it's not it's nice not to have everything work too hard. It's easier when everything just kind of it's like the sum of all parts kind of thing. So multi band compressors are incredible and they can be incredibly musical and they don't have to be abused. You can from just a purely utilitarian standpoint, they're incredibly useful, but they're incredibly creative and they're one of the most important tools in my arsenal for really cleaning up a mix. So I hope you enjoyed my top 10 mix tips. I'm going to put links in the bottom for all the gear and the software I talked about. This is all stuff I use on a regular basis and it's a big part of the sound of me, basically. So if you like it, check it out, support them because they're all incredible companies and some of them are pretty small and, you know, support goes a long way for everyone, especially right now. So on top of it, if you dig this, subscribe to my channel because suddenly I'm going to be doing videos and now it's a thing because we're all in our houses for the foreseeable future. And uh, this is my way to connect with you and also leave comments, leave feedback, and I'm going to be doing this frequently. So until then, I'll see you guys next time and happy mixing.